Hey everyone, we're here at Inventables headquarters with Massimo from Arduino. Hi everybody. So uh, first, so for maybe, obviously almost everybody knows what Arduino is for, if this is maybe you're younger and you're just getting started, uh, for, tell us what is the Arduino? So the Arduino, it's a small computer, the size of a credit card. It, the, it's a very uh, low power computer, it means it's not like the laptop or the desktop computer you have at home. It's more like the computer that you find in your microwave oven. <clears throat> but it's very simple to program. It's very easy for beginners to pick it up. And you can actually build electronics projects that can make any object interactive with people or the external environment or even connected to the internet in a way which is much, much simpler than it used to be. So it used to be that you needed to be like an engineer to do this kind of stuff. Now, you know, somebody that invests maybe a weekend can actually start doing something interesting with it. Okay, so uh, before we get into the details of this, let, let's hear about you. So you're from Italy. <laughs> yes, I'm originally from Italy. From the, and where, so where did you grow up? I grew up near Milan. Okay. And uh, in a place called Monza. So if you're in, into uh, Formula One racing, Monza is one of the places where they do the, you know. Okay, uh, the form F1 racing. Okay, so um, when you were a kid, did you mess around with electronics? Or did you, were you a maker? Did you tinker with stuff? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, when I was a kid, I used to take apart everything. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah, we got to the point that actually people would take objects to my home just so that I could take them apart. <laughs> And so uh, as you're taking things apart, did, what did your parents think? Were they encouraging of this? Or? Uh, no, they sort of, you know, dealt with it. But <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, uh, I didn't, they, they didn't, you know, specifically encourage it nor discourage it. Okay, they so let they, me do it. They, they let, let you do it. They look the other way. They're like, okay, yeah. now he's doing this other thing. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. And then, so in Italy, uh, you're, you're a professor? Yes, I was... I have been teaching in Italy for a long time. Now I teach in Switzerland, in the south of Switzerland, and in Copenhagen. Okay, and then so what was the origin of this? Like, what gave you the idea to, to get involved with this? Well, the idea is that I started teaching uh, designers, specifically interaction designers. So the kind of people who design objects that contain digital technology that interact with people. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the way you interact with one of those new kind of uh, 21st century objects is that the language the way you interact is as important as the shape of the object. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be designed, like you know, the kind of materials and shape you use for this table, a mobile phone, the interface is very important. So mm -hmm. in order to do a good job, you need to be able to make prototypes. Mm -hmm. So if you make the food processor of the future, you need to be able to prototype the interface with real people mm -hmm. to see if real people actually find that new and, 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 and you know, and, and um, and, and as good as you think it is, you know, because that's a problem sometimes with design. You think you have a genius idea and then you show it to regular people and like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's unusable, I don't understand. So clearly, this prototyping, it's very important. So we teach students to start, you know, maybe at the beginning with a cardboard prototype and then yeah. they have to make something that works. Okay. So we, I work with a number of friends to, you know, work on, on, on something that would be reasonably cheap would have a USB connection. Mm -hmm. Back then it was all serial. And then it would be multi-platform, so Windows, Mac, and Linux, because back then most of the tools were Windows only. Mm -hmm. And then we thought that everything about the platform should be open source, mm -hmm. including the design of the hardware, mm -hmm. in order to create a healthy ecosystem where people you know, feel they can take your design, extend it, work on it, and it worked. Yeah, so uh, Edward actually used the, the Arduino in the design of the Shapeoko CNC mill that has the gargoyle shield on top. Uh, so we thank you, that was, that was pretty cool because he wouldn't have been able to make a low cost CNC machine without something like this. But so, um, have you thought about or have you, is there any way that you can measure the impact of all the Arduinos over the years since you started? Mm. Like, how, how has that changed the world so far? Well, I think it had, it had an impact uh, in a way that people started to create all these you know, layers of, 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 um, of innovation on top of the Arduino that they made open source as well. Okay. Like in the case of the Shape Oco, I see you're using the Gerbil Shield. Yeah. So what happens is that somebody made a G-code interpreter mm -hmm. and they made it open source and mm -hmm. people started to fix it, make it better. Based on that, they made the 3D printers, CNC machines, and all sorts of you know, multiple axis machines. Mm -hmm. So those are layers of knowledge that people have developed that now are, uh, you know, 
they are really an asset of the open source community so that now when you want to build a multi-axis machine all the basic pieces are there uh -huh. so whoever comes into the into the community right now already has all these layers of work done that like seven years ago were not there uh -huh. so i think this is what i think was powerful in arduino is that we gave the example to people that you need to share as much as possible uh -huh. and to be inclusive in the community so you know create forums where if you're a beginner and you ask well we consider as a stupid question people don't attack you mm -hmm. but they say well you know let's see what we can do or you know let's we would and they help you mm -hmm. and that that system generates a healthy cycle where beginner come come they the beginners come to the to the community they learn they build something interesting they share it somebody else will take it extends it and you know and you build mm -hmm. you're kind of building a building mm -hmm. one floor at a time that's cool. So you were telling me earlier uh, before we started that now students are coming to your uh, your classes already having some experience with Arduino. Uh, yes, Arduino has been around now for enough years that you have students that come to the master's degree where I teach where they already used it at the bachelor level for sure. Uh -huh. And there was also a case of somebody that actually used it in, in high school. Okay. So they used it in the last year of high school at bachelor and then they showed up at the masters where they were you know pretty uh, pretty good as an Arduino hardware software developer and that obviously means that students now become more you know um, demanding they yeah. want more powerful they need powerful platforms they they want to do more complex projects so Arduino also has to evolve to follow that so yeah so t talk about that so that now that students you, you sort of raised the bar with this yeah. What is that next step and how are you going to satiate these students' curiosities and demands <laughs> for, for more? Well, you know, there is an interesting trend, right? Now, several interesting trends. One is that obviously there is a huge interest in whatever is uh, a device connected to the internet. Okay. So you need to create tools that allow people to build a device that can do complex interaction with web servers, websites. That don't doesn't require you to become you know a full blown computer scientist. Okay. So we come up with this Arduino Yun. There's an, it's an Arduino that has a tiny Linux machine on board. Mm -hmm. That you you know the Arduino is good at doing you know manipulating the hardware level very quickly very precisely, and the Linux side can connect to Facebook and download the list of your friends and figure out who's online you know that kind of stuff. Oh, that's it. Okay. So that solves the problem. We have measured using also this um, other platform, software platform we use in the UN called Tembu, that there were people that were able to go online and do in complex interaction with Facebook in eight minutes from the moment they signed up. Wow. So they went online, they signed up for the online platform, they clicked, copied an example, eight minutes they were live. And that's obviously a positive reinforcement that tells people, you know, I can do this. I can do this, yeah. Yeah, and the other thing that I can see is that there's a lot of people that actually would like to have a a powerful operating system to use to make the user interface of whatever they're building. So they're looking for something that has Linux capabilities or Android capabilities, graphical interface capabilities, and the capability to do low-level, precise interaction with, with the lower-level hardware. Mm -hmm. Because when you do a CNC machine, mm -hmm. If you use like a regular computer, the way the pulses go to kind of move all the motors, they are not they cannot be timed precisely on Linux, so mm -hmm. you lose a lot of that. So there's a trend now to see boards that are made of like a Linux Android component plus an Arduino component, mm -hmm. and we are working on that kind of paradigm. That's well. pretty exciting. So last question before we go here. Yeah. Uh, you know, say, talking, we, we were at Maker Faire uh, last weekend, mm -hmm. there was lots of families, lots of young kids who <laughs> maybe aren't even at high school yet. What, what advice do you have for some of those youngsters who see all this cool stuff and uh, just getting started? Well, I would say there are now very exciting tools for kids. For example, if you want to learn the basics of electronics, get a little bit. Okay. Get little bits. You, it's magnetic, colorful. It, they done a great job. You snap them together and you learn the basics. Because, you know, I turn this and the light can ch changes. So I learned that. And then you can, you know, get maybe an Arduino. For example, we have this thing called Arduino Explorer, which is an Arduino that looks like a game controller. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of sensors already on board. So if you're a kid, you don't need to build circuits. You can do already dozens of experiments just with that device. Mm -hmm. And since it looks like a game controller, a lot of kids you know, find it 
they understand immediately where they can what they can do with it. Mm -hmm. And then you can graduate maybe to a regular Arduino or use a system like the system we made called the Tinker Kit, where all the sensors are modules that you can snap on the Arduino. So you, again, you don't have to build the electronics from scratch. So there are now nice layers that of, of tools that kind of start from when you were a little kid and mm -hmm. kind of take you all the way up to the expert Arduino or electronics level. All right, folks, you heard it here first from Massimo. If you're just getting started, one step at a time and start with little bits. Massimo, <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. All right.